Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in this video I wanted to take a quick look back over my recent Crawl Boys project where I painted up the Crawl Boys Force from the Age of Sigmar Dominion box set. Just wanted to go over how I found painting the units, uh, cover a few more tips and recipes that I haven't covered in the tutorials, and maybe have a quick chat about what I want to do with the project in the future. So, I hope you enjoy it. First up are the Hobgrots, and these were the first tutorial I did for the Crawl Boys portion of the box as well. I'll admit when I first saw these guys I wasn't like bowled over, and then when I opened the box up and I built the kit, I completely fell for them. This this was all of a sudden, this has gone from, oh I need to do a tutorial for work, to, oh maybe there's a project in this somewhere. I really, really enjoyed making the tutorial for these, I hope that comes across in the video. I will link it uh, up in the top here and I'll link them in the description as well. I've built up another 10 of these guys with a couple of little conversions in there just to make sure that only the boss and the banner bearer have helmets on. Um, so I had to do a little bit of chopping and changing with some other of the bear heads. I hate having duplicates in an army. Um, so I just sort of switched out a few grenade hands for stabbing hands, shanking hands, and, uh, and, and put on a few of the heads as well, um, change the direction a little bit. They go together very, very simply. Um, there's not many pieces, but it does mean that changing things, um, you sometimes have to sculpt in uh, a little bit of extra. But I'll be adding those. They'll actually be the next, the very next thing that I add into the army, hopefully just in time for us to get all the new goodies. Next up is Gut Rippers. So the battle line for the army. I always think when you're doing an army project that you need to love, or at least really like the battle line models for it. Because typically, or certainly when I'm collecting an army, that's what I want to have plenty of. Um, they're the, the visual cue of that army. When someone sees a bunch of them on the table, they go, oh, it's a cool boy's army, cool. Thankfully, these sculpts didn't disappoint. Um, I've talked about it a few times, but I, I really love the direction that Games Workshop have gone with this new range of orcs, oryx, whatever, greenskins. Um, it's, it's pretty exciting, and I can't wait to get my hands on the, the other beasties. Again, I'll link the tutorial up for these guys, but what was nice is because of the way a lot of the characters for the Cruel Boys are just slightly bigger gut rippers, generally riding beasties, I was able to use exactly the same recipe that I used on these guys for the rest of the characters in the army. And when it came to painting something on a on a quite a tight time scale that I gave myself with these, it just took a lot of the thinking out of it. So whilst I spent a lot longer perhaps working on these than I wanted to, I saved myself a lot of time in the future uh, with painting the rest of the characters for the army. A good example of this actually is the killer boss on foot. Um, absolutely everything that I've done on this model I've covered uh, in the Gut Rippers tutorial. That made it really, really easy. I did an ever so slightly different uh, skin recipe for the Grob. Not that he's got much skin on him, this lad. Um, I've been really enjoying coming up with different greens uh, and I'm certainly no plans on stopping, um, but my little recipe book is, is growing. Uh, it's a good job in jotting them down as well because there's quite a few different models I'm wanting to paint that happen to be Oryx or Orcs or Orcs, depending on what game you are playing. One of the coolest characters, I think probably my favourite character in the box, uh, is the Swamp Caller Shaman. Uh, this guy has a lot going on. He's a very good example of these modern Games Workshop kits where there's, there's a lot of depth to the model. Um, the way he goes together means, again, I don't think he's terribly easy to paint in sub-assemblies, um, partly because you'll have some fairly big join lines you'll need to fix up uh, if you're going to do that anyway. But that doesn't really bother me. If I'm painting an army, particularly an army quickly, I'm going to generally be assembling the models as near as whole as possible um, prior to painting. But it just did make a few of the bits quite fiddly to get into, so like, you know, his chest and his gut plate and all of that. You just... I found... The fact I hadn't glued them to the base was definitely helpful here because it meant if I used quite a narrow paint holder, so like a cork or something like that, I was able to point them away and, and sort of get up uh, into there without too much difficulty. Um, one of the little tutorials I was going to stick in here, I certainly wasn't planning on it, but a lot of people have asked about, oh, how have you done the glowing slime um, and smoke coming out from his little cup and um, from the Pockrot's cauldron? It's very simple, and this is how I went about it. Over black primer, I'm going to base coat it using Vallejo Game Color Escorpina Green. You can already see this is a very uh, almost fluorescent green. It's not dissimilar to GW Moot Green uh, if you can't get hold of this, but it won't give you quite as much pop. 
uh, as we're getting from the Escorpina. I'm not generally a fan of OSL or sort of glowy effects, but I do think that uh, Age of Sigma um, and yeah, fantasy stuff really, particularly Age of Sigma, it doesn't throw me off too much. I don't dislike it. Uh, and I've done it on some warp stone on a Skaven model, and I quite liked it. Um, so I thought I'd have a go on this guy here. This, much like the rest of this army, I'm doing things probably in fewer steps than I typically would. Um, that's simply to do with the, the time frame I'm working on. And I needed the army to look good on the table because I want to be learning the game with this army. So I need to be able to throw it down and get some games in. So using little sort of cheats almost or gimmicks like this OSL, um, it's just going to help me out a little bit. So giving it one more coat of the Escorpina green, you can see already how well it's covering. Uh, I did three coats in total in the end. Then over that, I'm going to give it a coat of Games Workshop Warp, Light Warp Lightning Contrast Paint. I haven't diluted this at all, so it's just going straight over. And then ideally, while this is still wet, um, I'm going to add another contrast paint in, um, a sort of wet blend them together. The lid of the uh, pot closed on me as I was filming this, which is a little bit annoying, which is why you'll see a, a pause in a second. But with contrast paints, um, I haven't varnished this, I haven't done anything like that. The uh, Escorpina Green has a slightly glossy finish anyway, um, which helps the contrast paint run uh, into the recesses a little bit more. Um, so I didn't need to gloss that green before I did the contrast paints. There we are, just sorting the lid out. Um, and I'm going to grab a turquoise here, so I'm using a contrast paint pterodon turquoise. And about two thirds of the way down, uh, I'm just going to splodge this on and work the way down. As I said, I would have preferred if I'd been able to do this immediately after I'd applied that green contrast, but um, it's not too bad. Contrast gives us a bit of work time. And that's simply so that we're not putting, uh, we're basically we're putting wet paint on wet paint, not wet paint on semi-dry paint. Um, that's sometimes when we're going to get issues. Uh, and then I'm going to take a darker blue as well. Um, this was a Kalian green contrast. Um, it's sort of super quick, slightly rough and ready wet blending, really. Um, you can have all sorts of fun. I've seen some fab versions of this where people have gone through all the different colours. Uh, and it looks pretty cool, actually. Then once that's dry, I'm going to go in with uh, an ink. So ink is a, a very, very strong color a uh, strong paint and typically it's made slightly different to how we would use our normal paints um, which means it will be very very runny uh, very very thin but it will still have an incredibly powerful color um, something which you might think oh contrast paints are a bit like that that's true you can use them in a very similar way i'm using a uh, de la rowney here but any artist's acrylic ink will work and i'm using their light green a lot of people have seen me use this before and said oh that's the fluoro paint the fluorescent green it's not um, it's just particularly bright, this light green, um, but by all means go ahead and use fluorescent if you want to. Well, all I'm doing here is essentially working it into the recesses. So as the liquid's becoming smoke, I want the recesses to be brighter than the outer surfaces. Um, this should hopefully sort of sell the idea that you've got this weird magical, you know, nonsense going on uh, in this liquid um, before it turns into this horrible uh, boggy mist. Um, that hopefully will win me many games in the future. Once that's dry, I'm going to take uh, a black, a matte black, and this is Vallejo model color black. I'm just going to do a little bit of dry brushing, and this, as I say, is to make sure that the recesses are our sort of brightest glowing parts, uh, and that the extremities where it's turning into smoke are a little bit more soot, you know, a little bit darker. And then the final step is to take the Games Workshop Technical Paint Tesseract Glow, which is basically fluorescent green ink, uh, and airbrush this over there. And you can see the overspray that I'm getting from this is giving us that real rough and ready uh, OSL effect on the cape. Super simple, um, by no means the best way of doing it, but it's a very quick way of doing it. I think it looks all right. Next up is the Bolt Boys. These are really lovely models. Uh, I think they're a very good um, representation of what the, what the Cruel Boys are all about and what makes them different to the other uh, Auric models and this idea that it's, it's, you know, it's orcs that shoot uh, which is quite fun. These guys have got a little bit more armour on them um, so actually they're a little bit quicker to paint which is nice 
um, and they've also got the enormous great crossbows. Um, all the wood across this army, I've just used the um, rotten wood recipe I did, so I'll link that video up now um, when I was doing the decay and corrosion video somewhat presciently. Uh, honestly, I didn't know what was coming. I just heard murmurings of swampy stuff. I was like, oh, okay, let's try and make some moss and some rotten wood and see see if that pays off in the future. And it did, because there's a ton of it across the Cruel Boys. Also, having seen that recent preview on the Wyoming community site, it seems that painting the gut shields and everything yellow, the scare shield yellow, is, uh, might have been quite a good idea. Um, these boys might be quite tasty. Penultimate character is the Merc Knob with the Belcher banner. Some amazing names uh, in this range. I think, like a lot of people, when I saw this model, there was a... Uh, oh, that looks uh, quite a lot, or is a nice nod uh, to Azog from the Hobbit film. Uh, and because of that, I thought it'd be nice to paint this guy quite pale um, as, a, as a sort of little nod to that. So here's how I went about painting the skin. I start in the same way that I've painted the rest of the skin on the army, and that's by base coating it all in scale 75 black leather. Now, as I've said in the other videos, I would recommend you find yourself a different dark purple paint if you want to try and replicate these schemes. Um, that is a lot friendlier to airbrush with. Uh, I've kept going with the black leather just for that consistency, um, but as I say, I certainly wouldn't recommend it. It just doesn't airbrush very well. Over the top of that, we're applying our first highlight, which is Ammo by Mig Olive Drab Dark. So we're just wanting to leave the purple in the sort of deepest recesses. So again, this is exactly the same uh, first two steps that we've used on the Cruel Boys, uh, on, the, on the Gut Rippers rather. So again, we should have that nice little bit of consistency and harmony. Then we change it slightly, and our next highlight is again Ammo by Mig, and this is Dunkelgelb Light Base. Um, I bought the Dunkelgelb modulation set from them a long time ago. Um, and I do use those paints quite often. Uh, they're very, very nice in the airbrush. You don't need to thin them at all, or I don't anyway. When I'm spraying at 25 PSI, pop them straight in and you're good to go. So you see already it's given us a very different green immediately. Um, but because we've got those first two greens in there, or the purple and the green in there, uh, we should still get a little bit of, of harmony with the rest of the army. Take your time when you're using these much lighter colors. Um, you know, it's thin paint, it's easy to apply a couple of layers to build it up rather than doing it in one shot. Then the final highlight is a Dunkelgelb highlight. And this really is just on the face and any prominent areas uh, that are facing. You know, so the way his arm's sticking out there, the way his foot's sticking out, they're going to be, you know, the light's going to be hitting them pretty hard. We can brighten those up a little bit more. And then once all of the uh, acrylic paints there are dry, I'm going to give him an oil wash. So I've taken odorless artist thinners, so uh, in this case Winsor & Newton Sansador, I've mixed them with uh, an oil colour called Payne's Grey into a wash. I'm just going to slot that over the model. Once that's dried off, I treat him exactly the same as I've done the rest of the gut rippers. But I might revisit this uh, recipe in the future. Uh, I quite like the, uh, like the colour it gave me. Finally, we've got the centerpiece model from the Cruel Boys half of the box, which is the killer boss on Great Nash Tooth. I was getting a little bit worried when I was looking at my collection growing on the shelf that I'd made the common mistake I think people make where my army looked too dark when it was on the table. So from three foot away, it wasn't interesting enough. Now, partly I think that's because all the models I've painted up until this point were all roughly the same size. So you didn't really get any difference there. And because I wanted that dingy, grimy look to them, um, naturally they were they were darker colours. They were browns, they were greens, uh, sort of desaturated colours. I was getting a bit nervous about it, but when we saw all of these models that are coming out for the Cruel Boys in the future, a lot of them are beasts. And I thought, okay, well, let's get some colour in, but use it on the beasts. So rather than the beasts being sort of, you know, muted colours as well, I'm going to go at them a little bit harder and make it a little bit more exciting to look at on the table and I've just finished up the Nash Tooth video uh, over on Patreon if you want to go and check out uh, how I've done the uh, the skin and well and, and all the stuff uh, on that awesome looking mount. For the killer boss though again I've just done exactly the same as I've done in the Gut Rippers video which was nice and simple. Amazing model, quite tricky to paint um, but well well worth it. I think it, it makes a really excellent centerpiece for this army until I get my hands on that vulture that is. 
Now, I could sit here and list all the things that I don't like about what I've done on these models, um, but that's not really very fun to listen to. So I think the overall, uh, the overarching feeling of this project, now it's finished or phase one is finished, is happiness. You know, I, I set myself a challenge. I wanted to get this army done sort of within the month of release so that I could start learning the game. You know, if I painted these models to the best of my ability, I just wouldn't be playing Age of Sigma. You know, I've fallen into that trap in the past. So the idea was to get them painted up where they're looking good enough where I'm pleased, but I can sling them in the bag, chuck them on the table, you know, move them around loads, take them back, replay parts, learn the game. And in that time that that allows me, I can maybe take my time with a second army. So go back to my Slaves to Darkness, for instance, and enjoy that painting process a little bit more and be a bit more proud of the results. But I think for the time frame I gave myself to paint this army, I'm very pleased. I honestly think they look the best they could within that sort of restriction. The one thing I am going to change about them, um, now I've finished this video this weekend, uh, is I'm going to be adding a few more tufts to the bases. I think when you have dark models, generally if you want them to pop a little bit more on the table, often a lighter base is going to help. And because I went for that sort of dark swampy base, I think it's just the whole thing is that a little bit too dark. So I'm just going to stick one or two more tufts on each base. Uh, you can see I already did it on the Shaman actually, and I think that's going to have the desired effect. So I can't wait to add sort of one of every new unit that comes out. Um, they're fun to paint, you know, I can sit there and go, right, I'm going to get that unit painted this week or get that unit painted this weekend and be playing with it. And that's a really rewarding and quite exciting part when you look at the collecting side of the hobby. You know, it's, they're not going to sit in a box. I can get it. I can look at it. I've got 90% of all my recipes that I'm going to use on the rest of this army. They're all done. They're all written down or recorded here on YouTube. Um, so not too much thinking. Just sit down, bit of discipline, get them painted. But I hope you've enjoyed following um, the process over here and on Patreon. I'm really looking forward to uh, to the next army project. Um, it's fair to say I'm a big old convert to orcs uh, and the joy of painting them. Um, so I think maybe, I mean, there's that pretty cool kill team box coming up. I did paint Zograd the other week. So yeah, maybe it's time to, to get some of them painted up for, for 40k. But we will see. But thanks very much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it if you've stuck with me. Um, hit the like button, hit subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more of mine and Andy's personal projects uh, and what perhaps you might be excited to see us work on and share with you in the future. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.